All right, we're back here for our second match of the night, week three. Raphael's back with us. Uh, York has transitioned from the announce uh, table to the game table here uh, for our second and third feature matches of the night. Uh, playing against Adam, uh, who we see his, his hand here. Uh, what's going on with York? York's got a full plate tonight. York's got a f- two mountains still in the hand, one planes. Um, a dragon's fire for early interaction. Uh, his old trusted buddy Quintorius, a oh, monster yeah. star that he just drew a uh, brackish blunder. Okay, so he's still playing the red blue deck with a few white cards that we've seen uh, over the past couple weeks. And Adam, I think, is still running his Abzan deck that we've seen over the past few weeks. So Adam's three and zero so far in feature matches this league. Same like last league, but uh, I guess you're 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 not here to end his streak. So maybe York will do it. <laughs> York's here today. Uh, did you ever say it was in Adam's hand? I'm not sure. I know it's over there. Yeah. So we got a bitter triumph here. We got a Cosmium Confluence, the rare. Another chance. We got a soaring Sandwing, and we got a uh, forest and two planes. So uh, nothing to really play early on. He has a removal spell. He has the Cosmium Confluence, which can ramp him up. Uh, soaring Sandwing, which he can cast eventually, and another chance that he can cast eventually. So he's just cycling this here because he has another chance just to get a land out of his deck, I suppose. He doesn't really need the land, but he's just doing it to do it. And he's drawn Unstable Glyph Bridge. So uh, maybe hoping for a bit of an overextension here. I mean, this next turn, I'm just assuming with no blue mana like at all, uh, we're just slamming the Quintorius. And then <laughs> I assume the Glyph Bridge it. comes down as soon as possible. Yeah, make him deal with it. Um, yeah. yeah, Chris York has had quite the day. So he showed up. Uh, he showed up this afternoon with uh, with all five of his matches to play. And you know, like sometimes if you start playing on Friday, Saturday, you run into some of what we call the sharks. There's a lot of the 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 top players are circling around on those days, getting their matches in. Um, but he promptly ran into Jordan, and then Cody Race, and then Damian, and now Adam and Steve. So that's his five matches for the week. So uh, <laughs> he's uh, quite the he's, plate. He's got quite quite the quite the roster to go through, and he's gotten, I believe he's gotten two out of the three so so far. Two one's pretty good. I'll take it. He's got two out of the three, and he's trying to make it a bit more here. And um, bitter triumph is one of the few cards in the set that can target a planeswalker. So off goes uh, Quintorius. Oh. I didn't. I, I I did not even know that because there's only one planeswalker in the set. So like. <laughs> it's definitely going to even out the the playing field now. I mean, that right. was definitely uh, Chris's best way uh, of just like ending the game on site. Granted, he still has all these uh, discover lands, and he's about to play it now, uh, Abuelo. So yeah, that was a good one. If he can hit something off the blunder, as long like as you don't out. keep a land with a Abue- as long as you don't keep a hand with Abuelo and six lands, yeah, where you can't even cast Abuelo on turn three with those lands, Abuelo is a good card to have. And that, <laughs> we may have seen that last week, but it uh, looks like it's going to be okay here. But this this Cosmium Confluence is going to put Adam, uh, give him a really good board state here. Uh, you know, turning his lands into 3-3s, three finding more caves if he wants. Um, let's see how he plays it. I think that's what he's going to cast. He also has Over the Edge, another chance, and two more lands. And the Glyph Bridge on, uh, on Layaway here whenever he wants to turn it into a threat. So is Cosmium the Blast one with three modes? Uh, the Cosmium Confluence, yeah, but you, you could choose any one as many times as you want. This looks like he's searching, uh, old, searching, and mana. putting counters. <laughs> so he's going to get two caves, and then he's going to make his untapped hidden nursery into a 3-3. Three, three. See, that's fair. If he went all in on the land, uh, York would just blow him out with the Brackish Blunder. But because he's dividing and conquering, uh, this won't hurt as much. Yeah, depending on the caves that you have access to, this Cosmic Confluence can be a, a game breaker. Depending, uh, depending on the state. Yeah. Of the game. I I just I, I always see it come around in draft, and I can never take it, and I'm always sad because I just don't have enough caves to make it worth my while. But uh, yeah, pretty nice one here. I could see how it, it hasn't been on my radar. Caves. It hasn't been on my radar until someone mentioned. Ooh, are we going to dragons fire it? All right, we're firing off the dragons fire. Might as well. Nothing else. I mean. I kind of would want to save that Dragon's Fire for that 5-3 that wins the game on the back of the, the Glyph Bridge. Um, yeah, that's what I would think. Plus, the Glyph Bridge is, like, right there. At 20 I mean, life, it doesn't see seem, it earlier. At 20 life, it doesn't seem to be a uh, pressing matter here. Especially with, like, the knowledge of the Glyph Bridge just sitting there staring at you. 
And if York's got nothing else to do, he can uh, he can get some value off his abuelo here and get another map token. Um, maybe he wants to save up Brackish Blunder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, he can also do it at the uh, during Adam's second main phase. Yeah, but it's not as good though, right? Isn't it your end step when it gets blinked back in? No, it's just it's uh, you could do it at it's the beginning of the next end step, I believe. Ah, uh, okay. So if he does it on the main on Adam's second main phase, he gets he gets to untap with both, and he gets another extra map to to play around with. Looks like we're just getting another chance casted here, perhaps. We got an interesting draw from Adam here, a card we don't see very much. It was in Shadows over Innistrad, the Asylum Visitor, which maybe he got from uh, being able to get a vampire, a rare vampire. <laughs> Since Shadows Remastered is not even among the packs that are available, I don't think, here. But uh, it it's a 2 mana 3 one. It has Madness. But it also, it also says uh, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, or at the beginning of your upkeep, if, if, if a player has one or fewer cards in hand, you draw a card and lose a life. Interesting card. Yeah, another chance kind of whiff there, only getting back the, the Sandwing. But like I said, he's got this angel on layaway here that uh, can and might want to win the game. I'm confused here now. <laughs> I don't know if York knows that Abuelo can blink. <laughs> I think he does, but I would have just blinked my thing. I just block and blink. Uh, I'm good with that. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. We'll see how it plays out. I, I Ooh, guess it, there's probably a no plan. Of note, Adam has milled his uh, Crux of Fate, which is a, a pretty big game breaker. And that's unlikely to come back. There's not really ways to get back in since there's sorceries in this set. Now Boilo's going to go exploring. Another land. Story of my life. I, I feel your pain, York. Always lands, never gas. <laughs> well, he's, he's, he's managing for now, but uh, there's going to be a 3-5 flyer coming down likely this turn. Spinning right. the wheels. That's been York's thing this this league spinning these uh discover lands. That yeah, we saw. Did. Yeah, we saw this last time. He, I mean, he literally played against Adam last week, and we had the situation of him just turn after turn staying just alive enough thanks to those lands, but not quite enough to win that game. But they had a very very uh, competitive match last week, and uh, it's a rematch. So uh, York York is out for blood. He 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 wants to win. He wants to end Adam's streak, and he wants to get back get back on the winning winning ways that he's started this week. This yeah, Asylum oh, Visitor nice. may come up, may not. It's a 3-1, which is okay, but... Uh, It'll be a turn, if anything. York still has uh, three lands in hand. Well, we saw last week he's very good at he's very good at ah. compiling lands. That was one of his uh, one of his better better things to do that he was good at last week. <laughs> yeah, this chart, of course, is going to get rid of a land, more than likely... Hold yeah. something. Not too much going on in Adam's hand, but Adam has a lot of stuff going on on board, right? He has a Discover Land, he has a Captivating Cave, he has the Maw, and he has the Glyph Bridge in hand, just two yeah. lands and then over the edge. Uh, but his power lies in the lands, and so does York's, honestly, from what it sounds like. Did he, does he have anything else in hand aside from the lands? Uh, just a little scallywag. Okay, so not nothing that's going to really impact the board here. No, we're probably just spinning wheels again next turn. I'm, I'm really curious, at what point do you start blinking? <laughs> Uh, your things on board. We haven't seen it a single time. Well, as soon as you know that you can do it, you probably start doing it. Well, for example, like he spent the mana brackish blundering instead of blinking or yeah, blocking. That was blinking. that was a bit of a, a bit of a weird one. I, I will say. Yeah, there's, uh, there's been two prime time like turns where like you would think blinking would have been the play there, yeah. but instead you're decided to use a different resource. So I'm just I'm curious. Uh, if there's something in his deck, like he's trying to dig towards, so um, here, I'm not 100 so sure. Here comes a nice axe jaw here off of the discover. This 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 guy's kind of going to kind of dominate the board now, like based on the sizing of the creatures in play. Yeah, and it's not looking good for attacks either for uh, York. Three five blocks this guy. One one death toucher blocks the ground. Yeah, so York got off to a nice a nice start here, getting getting a getting a bunch of damage in early, but. Uh, Looks like it's it's coming around here in the in the latter part of the game, and like I said, that glyph bridge is just such an insane threat. It is a house. We we have um more wheels being spent. 
like through the uh, white uh, Discoverland. What do we got okay. here? We got a Captain Storm. It's pretty good with uh, blinking the, the Water Wind Scout because it makes a, yeah. makes a little map token. But so I, you can I, I play that. Use that treasure. He just has one white source here, so he oh, he's got a second one now. Yeah. All right. So here's a treasure. Here's a counter. All right. Things are coming along here. <laughs> well, he wanted to put on the two two the, the oh. flyer, but it's uh, not a pirate. Ah, we see a fourth what? color now from Adam uh, splashing the cart sail larcenist, the rare that uh, turns something into a treasure. Pretty good. Do you think he's going to fire it off on the Captain Storm? I think you have to do it on Abuelo, because Abuelo, Abuelo. Abuelo yeah. can just blink whatever whatever you turn into uh, a treasure and put it back to its original form. So There's only one real target for that. I guess Adam's trying to figure that out right now. Yeah, his other card is Over the Edge, which doesn't really do anything at this time. Now, the Glyph needs, what, an artifact to flip? I believe so. I've never got the, uh, I, I think, I, I don't think I've ever had the joy of, of playing that, so, but I believe it's an artifact, dude. Yeah. I'm trying to think, have we seen Adam play an artifact all game? Most or of the white cards, artifact? most of the white cards craft with uh, artifacts. No, he doesn't have an artifact right now. Okay. But so I mean, it's, it's, it's still sitting there. It's still sitting there, you know, whenever whenever he does Menacingly? <laughs> oh, okay. No, it's well, an angel. That's... Angels are peaceful, right? It's sitting there in in a lot of serenity. I don't know. Tell it to Lear the Dawnbringer. <laughs> it's a very serene angel, except when you try and fight it. All right, so getting getting aggressive here, trying to whittle down the life total. Uh, York decides he does not want to trade two creatures for that dinosaur. He'd rather just take five. And it looks like Kite Sail Arsonist is coming down. I'll be honest, it's I mean it's week four, and I'm I'm surprised at how many three color decks I'm still seeing, but I but it does make sense to me. Uh there's a lot of fixing. There's there's decent fixing and the games can go long, so um, Oh. <laughs> yeah. He chose the captain. So he's turning <laughs> his own marionette into a treasure so he could potentially use it with the, the glyph bridge, I think. But if York knows about the blinking, he can just reset the captain, right? I mean, we'll see. We'll Let's see. see if, York has a whirlpool in hand he's looking at. Because Abuelo says artifact or creature, I believe. I would just... I'd be trying I'd to. Be I'd be so probably awesome whirlpooling the five four out. or the three five before I whirlpooled the uh, the larcenist. So he's gone for the explore here, which is gonna get an abrade. So that can just uh, get rid of this larcenist here. So he has what? He you said he has a quicksand whirlpool. Yeah, okay. that's probably getting fired at the 5-4, I would believe. Yeah, I imagine. He doesn't have any way to block that anytime soon. See what York decides to do here, but I, I think this is... I, mean, I guess he, he, he could also target the Glyph Bridge, honestly. I guess he's not... Well, I guess there is worry now, now that it's a treasure, which I is fair. Let's... I think Glyph Bridge is a very viable target, honestly, for the Abrade. Like the Larsens has done his job. You just use the Abuelo to blink your guy back to a back to a creature, and the life the Larsen is just it's just a two three flyer sitting there. So I think mm. the Glyph Bridge poses a, a bigger threat. And here comes an artifact. We're kind of uh, right on time here. We got a scampering surveyor, which is going to give him probably another discover land. Will he block and blink? That's the question. I, I would, but he didn't oh. last time, so. Okay, so he's blocking? I think he may have. Okay, all right, he's, he's reading it. He's reading okay, it. Good. <laughs> I was going to say, we, we haven't seen him use Abuelo's ability a single time, so I wasn't sure, but. Yeah, like, there was a, obviously a couple spots earlier to use it, but uh, this, is, this is a good one. It's player choice. I get it. There's always different little sneaky lines you can take. Uh, I don't think that was that sneaky, but 
Let's, let's see I'll, if he gets. I'm a, trying to give him as much credit as possible. <laughs> let's see if he gets. Let's see if he gets a, a hidden land or a cavernous maw or a captivating cave. Uh, there's just everybody just has playing a lot of caves. I found it's like all the cave payoffs are actually like kind of kind of viable. I think for a lead though, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like it's another way for you not to really like fully run out of gas. And it kind of makes you want to keep opening Lost Caverns packs. I, I know in yeah. this league, like, there's some points where you have a choice and some points where you don't, but it would make me want to open more caverns. Oh, packs. well, second of Braid was just drawn off the top. Okay. So he can always fire that off. Well, during... the, the backside's a 5-3, so he could just wait till it gets crafted in order to abrade it. Just have it, yeah. ha- have, it, have it consume another resource before he sends it on oh. his way. I guess he wants to get in. He's going to fire it off, the whirlpool off. Okay. I mean, that's fair. It means he can start attacking in the air. And he does have the abrade to, to kill the to kill his flyer. Like, he's at nine. So he does he does have a clock on him now. Like, Adam doesn't actually have a way to deal with any of this, aside from the glyph bridge, which York has an answer to. I stand behind the aggression. I like what I'm seeing. Well, you're just an aggressive guy. Send it, York. We're not going to land this on. No land. Oh, it's getting spicy. Oh. Chandra off the top. Mm, that's a good one. That's uh, that's gonna that's gonna tip this firmly in York's favor here. Yeah. So unless Adam gets something from the top, I mean, he just uh, needs. He has a petrify here. Do so you he put can, it on? So, so yeah, petrify the. Uh, yeah, that's the only one you can, you you can petrify. Yeah. Or you should. <laughs> so you can petrify and craft. Uh, he'll still be. He'll still be dead to getting hit for two and then two Chandra triggers unless he gains life. I think he's... Let's see uh, what trade sequences for this. Because, I mean, like, I assume no matter what, he's going to swing with the 5-4 at the very least. Uh, I'm not sure if he would risk his 3-2. I mean, York can... You, I mean, if, if York is reading the cards, he can see it needs an artifact to craft with. And, you know, maybe he opened his graveyard and didn't see any artifacts, so... I don't think York would be inclined to block here, considering he's got the, uh, the upper hand here, and and he knows something Adam Adam doesn't, which is that he can answer the angel, and he could even yeah. do it now. So, which means he can attack. Like he could do it on on Adam's uh, end step, which allows him to attack next turn. It's probably the last thing you really want to do to craft. Like you'd prefer it to be in the graveyard, not in the field. <laughs> Especially if yes, it's like a but when you're creature. facing down you're facing down close to lethal and you have the knowledge yeah. of the chandra on top like that's just like these these explorers are sometimes so ominous right <laughs> it's like well here it is deal with it find something to do <laughs> human gloom on top staring you down yeah that's one of the things i remember from ixon from explore it's just like you have you're just staring at that card for your entire turn and you're like oh no what in the world am i gonna do when that comes down <laughs> Okay, they petrify on the Abuelo. Yeah. Pay the extra two. Okay. Five mana left. Are we glyphing? Are we swinging? I mean, as, at least at, at least attacking for five, at the very least. Yeah. Almost definitely wants to attack with the Surveyor, I'd say, if, he, uh, if he's planning on crafting. Looks like he has over the edge here. I don't know what he wants to destroy. I guess he's just going to explore. No, this is just putting two counters would be better than exploring. Yeah, he just says, uh, "Let me try and race this. Ooh. Let's let's Ooh, get my that... opponent dead." There are fifteen, uh, and I can attack them for ten, and it's not favorable for me. Yeah, all Jork has to do is let the five and the, uh, I guess five and five go through. Live by five, kill the one one, and he wins in the crackback. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, so holding that abraid. Is uh, gonna work out nicely for him. Oh, oh. no attacks! Okay. <laughs> Puts the counters and says, now, "I'm like, getting aggressive, it. maybe." But here's a curious now, question, we'll though. Oh no! Don't abrade it. No. See, I don't. Yeah, like th this doesn't actually benefit York. It doesn't give him attacks, but. Yeah, I, I I definitely wouldn't have done it there. But I, I mean, mean uh, he still just gets to matter. go. He still just gets to attack him for two Chandra plus, and then in two turns, 
Adam does. Yeah. And it's unlikely he can deal 15 with uh, the current state of affairs. So if, if Adam finds a, a life gain card, he may be oh. able to, to do something here. Oh, I guess he's just killing the 5-4. Huh. And this forces a trade? But then the angel comes, which is a, a, a going to be a problem. Yeah. Interesting. This is oh, definitely a way to, like, to allow yourself to be beat here. It's still not likely, but it's definitely giving your uh, your opponent answers. Yeah, he's I, I still kind of like out. holding. I still kind of like holding the abrade, but uh, same because you can really just wait for your opponent to either swing, you know, respond because he would still have uh, the same man he has up now with the treasure, so he'd still be able to use it. Yeah, and if you plus you the Chandra, you then threaten to the minus to kill the Glyph Bridger if he flips it right. Like that's the yeah. That's like the that's kind of like the knife, right? That's kind of the the turning of the knife, right? You got your opponent on the ropes. They have this glyph bridge that might be able to to get them in it, and then you play Chandra. You're dealing damage with the emblem, and you are presenting an onboard answer for potentially the only thing that gets you out of it. But he went. I mean, at fifteen, I don't think you absolutely have to kill that five four. But uh, looks like he has to dig here with the over the edge. Okay, Maw and Promising Vein. Not exactly what he's after. Um, I guess he. I guess he. He's crafting here. I guess his only Probably play is to is to craft the glyph bridge. I believe. Well, yeah, but I assume York just pluses Chandra with nothing good on top. If he doesn't get anything, it's just craft the land and uh, spin the wheel. See what happens. Yeah, and I mean he's yeah. he's dead in two yeah. turns. He doesn't have life gain. He drew a soil soul coil viper. That's not gonna get it done. Uh, yeah, you kind of need a blocker fast enough. This turn. I mean, looks like his only real play is to is to Glyph Bridge, right? I would think, because the last card that uh, York doesn't know about it, you said is the Soul Cool of Viper? Yeah, which is not affecting much at this I time. I mean, I guess he could technically spin the wheels, but it's risky when you can just play a flyer. He's discovering instead. Spinning the wheels. Huh. But why discover if you have the glyph bridge that you could flip. Um, maybe there was something he was hoping to get there. I mean, he knows his deck better than we yeah, do, right? Yeah, because Chandra, <laughs> it's minus X to deal X damage. Obviously, doesn't have three. And, and it's minus three to deal three to everything. He probably so, just saw the line of flipping the glyph bridge is not really like a, in his mind, maybe not a winning play. Huh. It's definitely allowing him to live, bar, bar a top tech. I mean, I guess he just, I don't know how many cards he has in his deck to deal with the Chandra. It doesn't look like Almost anything except for I think Baleful Mastery hits a Planeswalker, um, and the Bitter Triumph that he that he already used know. on the other Planeswalker. <laughs> it would have to be something else though, because he's still dead to the Flyer in the air. Yeah, I don't know. Very interesting lines taken by both players in those games. A lot of uh, zigs where you know maybe we were thinking zags, but uh, maybe maybe he hit. forgot. Is Crux of Fate five or four? Crux of Fate is in the was in the graveyard. But I'm, I'm saying, did he know? Did he forget? If it's five minutes, it wouldn't matter. But if it's, it's less, maybe he was it's digging five. for that. It wouldn't matter then. It's five. It was in the graveyard, though. He had milled it very early. Does he have another board wipe of sorts? Uh, I mean, is, 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 two not, is two not enough? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, he does not have another board wipe, believe it or not. Okay, I assume he's, Adam's doing some extensive... Uh, maxed out at two. He does have a minus two, minus two to everything that he's... Uh, at least, scan. He's scanning York's graveyard and seeing everything as two toughness. Oh, has he found the line? Uh, he bounced over the two two, the minus two minus two, and immediately went to go look at the graveyard. Abuelo's a two two. Basically, everything that was played that game was a two two, more or less. Like, York doesn't. I mean, didn't seem even the spirits are two twos. Like when Torius makes, he hasn't brought it in yet, but uh, he moused over it at least uh, in consideration. Is that the um the 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 board wipe from this set or the next yeah, two from this the, set? Yeah, the eclipse here. Okay, it's funny. I don't think I've ever seen that card be played yet, ever. Huh? I've seen it, but like most of the black decks are like playing skull skull cap snails and and death cap marionettes and stuff in order to stay alive, and they they get wiped up in the minus two minus two. So, 
Like that's fair. It hurts you equally as much. Like if if Black had like a, you know like a two mana one three with some ability or something that could hold down the fort, then like that makes that card a lot better. But the cards that are sort of holding down the fort for Black are are small. Like the the Echo of Dusk is like you know a deck that most Black decks want, and that gets wiped up in it. So it just hasn't seen a lot of play because it doesn't match up well with the with the sizing of the Black two drops. I would say, or even the three mm-hmm. drops. Like there's like a the, like the two two flyer dies to it I just it's it doesn't doesn't line up that that nicely but that's fair you see I try the card out myself well. um york's kind of yeah. got a hand now at right. first it looked so kind of mid there was uh yeah. just one more island in hand whirlpool cerulean drake um the scout plundering pirate and then he drew the um uh the, the schooner for uh this turn which is definitely going to change up uh, future turns. All right, so Adam has a Resplendent Angel that he could play, but he's going to hold up the Bitter Triumph here uh, in hopes of nailing the, sco- the schooner. Oh, he's going to nail it. <laughs> I'm like nine times uh, positive that Chris is definitely animating this thing. I mean, right. what world don't you do it, right? Uh, well, not not this one. So, yeah, so he's, he decided to do that instead of playing the Resplendent Angel. Uh, the rest of his hand, he has a Soul Coil Viper, another chance, a Swamp, and then that car- Kite Sail Larcenist that we saw last game on his uh, his fourth color of blue here. Asylum Visitor off the top, that that 2 mana 3 one. Um, looks like it's just the, the Angel this turn. It could be Soul Coil Viper in anticipation that the Angel dies and then it could come right back. Now, York's only removal is removal where the Angel never sees the light of day ever again. It's the whirlpool. <laughs> okay, so interesting. He just doesn't choose to do either. Just plays the three one, which is the the least mana efficient play, but it but it's the c- card he's okay trading with the plund- plundering pirate. I think it makes sense. Like resplendent angel is like really a house if it goes uncontested and you have the mana yeah. to like give the pump and life link. So I mean, not to mention like, you don't want it to die too early, right? Yeah, so I if think, you have other plays, you can just play a little slower. I do feel like it's a little early to to decide to be this defensive and strand mana. Like, if he draws an untapped land next turn, he could have gone 2-drop, 3-drop. He could have played Asylum Visitor and a 3-drop. Instead, he just... He's maxed out at one play next turn, no matter what he draws, unless he draws a 1-drop. Which is fair. I mean, he could he could draw a, he could draw a land cycler and then be able to cycle and play something, but... Like, like now he's stranding 2 mana. So, like, last turn, he could have... Stranded one instead of so, two mana, and now this turn he's stranding two instead of zero. I think we're gonna see Chandra this turn. <laughs> I would, I would, I would be wanting to do that. Yeah, there you go. We and need your and, and York is kind of uh, maybe wiping his uh, wiping off the sweat because the bitter triumph is in the graveyard, so that's not not coming yeah. for for Chandra. So this is uh, this is a very favorable turn of events for Chris. Uh, Adam doesn't really have anything in his hand to to fight this Chandra. He's got a Scampering Surveyor, which will get him an island to cast his Kite Sail Larcenist. But Kite Sail Larcenist targets creatures or artifacts, not Planeswalkers, I believe. So, Yeah, York has a Whirlpool in hand. It's really in Drake and still two more lands. So I would, I would assume it's a Swing, probably tick up Chandra, play Cerulean Drake, save up Whirlpool. I did see a particularly nasty interaction with a uh, planeswalker earlier today in one of in, in one of York's matches. Jordan played a Tishana's Tidebinder, which countered the activation of the planeswalker and then basically removed all its abilities. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> so uh, if if you ever come across that one, it's uh, very nasty. All right. The Tidebinder is pretty good. It's pretty so good. He just played his Chandra. He said, "Let's kill two creatures and then kill the opponent." Cerulean Drake, I think a card I would be siding out here in this in this match. Or I, I think it's a card I would start with in the sideboard and side in. I don't think it's a card that would ever start my deck. <laughs> Unless like, I need it for a playable. Of note, I mean, it will, one, of note, it will not die to the Chandra minus three. Because it has protection from red. So <laughs> Interesting. Uh, <laughs> if you deal with damage to everything, it survives. <laughs> so, you said York has Soul Coil Viper... Adam does, yeah. He has the another chance, Adam. and he has the kite cell larcenist he can cast here. Okay. And uh, he also has the clay fire bricks. Not sure he has an artifact to go with it, but or he has the scampering surveyor. But that that got exiled by Chandra, so the clay fire bricks does not have a target yet. I believe for craft. Interesting. Right. Here comes larcenist. 
Is he going for the Drake? Or I mean, the, the Drake doesn't do anything. It's a 1-1 flying with no other text. <laughs> yeah, I would think he goes for the Scout. Yeah. Yeah, like like I said, I think that's a card I start with in the sideboard and then side in if I see mountains. I'm like, I'm, I'll, yeah. just, I'll just bring that guy in all day. But uh, definitely a card you would almost automatically side out in this type of match where your opponent's playing everything but red. Everything but the red. Now the, the Chandra bleeding begins here. What's what's your card in his hand, though, to, to defend the Planeswalker? Uh, three lands of note. One's a Plains, one's a Cataract, and one is a uh, Captivating Cave. Okay. And it looks like he wants to fire the Whirlpool off on the Larcenus. Yeah, well, he needs to keep this Chandra alive. Uh, he needs to hold on to this for dear life. Yeah. Now, of note, the rest of his hand isn't really that good. So what Adam could do is swing at the Chandra, get rid of he could even the two put counters. Three. He could even put counters on the, the Viper. I don't think you even care to do that, though. You can just bring back Resplendent Angel. That, that works, too. Yeah. I mean, as of right now, York's hand doesn't have any answers to Resplendent anymore. All right. Well, here's a guiding voice, which is that little one-mana learn spell. Put a counter on something. Yeah, that's actually that's actually that's cool. actually very key because that's actually going to give him a clean attack. But he's I'm trying to remember what to Adam has in the sideboard though. I know he has the sorcery white. Is that just creatures that it turns into a three two? I believe it's an online permanent. Oh, so he could just do that on Chandra, right? He also has the environmental sciences. But uh, yes, yeah. I suppose he could turn Chandra into a spirit. Unless it only hits creatures, but I believe it was an online permanent. Um, yeah, I feel like I never really got to see that card too much, and Strixhaven seems so far away. It was a long time ago, yeah. It's uh, hard to believe. <laughs> After you graduate, it's kind of hard to remember those times, right? I guess so, especially when uh, when uh, you were drinking as much as you did in college, you know. <laughs> well, that's, uh, what, what's route are you taking here, Adam? He's probably thinking. He's, he looks like he wants to do another chance. But uh, maybe just put that angel right back into play right now, without giving up the soul. The soul coil. Right. Petrify, that's you, uh, no, the, the angel got the angel got exiled. It did actually. So let's uh, let's scratch that off the menu. Yeah, the the Chandra, the Chandra minus X exiles the creature. Well, never mind. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, small oversight. Apologize for that, Chandra. Yeah, if you minus three. It, they go to the graveyard, but if you minus X, it goes in exile. So the only so another time we see another chance just just only hit one, only hit one creature. So then let's see, is he is he mousing over? Um, no, he's gonna loot. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna loot the asylum visitor into play, which is fair. Cute. I did uh, was not expecting to see a madness uh, cost being paid in this in this match. Uh, not what I was expecting, but uh, it's, it's what we get. <laughs> and then, okay, oh, that's a pretty good draw. The Monstrous Arf return. Is that just a 6-5? Yeah. I mean, just a 6-5. I mean, Adam does have the Petrify in hand that he that he drew, so there's that. Ooh, right. Looks that? like he's just going just gonna to keep sending these creatures on their way here. He, just, he doesn't want Adam to, to draw cards. I don't know. I might be fine just ticking up the Chandra, to be honest. I, I'm not sure how much... I think denying uh, your opponent the card draw is, is pretty big. I mean, if you can kill your opponent in, what, like four turns? I don't know. I might take the risk there, but we'll see how it turns out. Yeah, because so now, now he has to put this in the way. Yeah, and then your Chandra's still dead in one turn if you don't get a good flip off this. I mean, he has his draw step, and he has the, the cave, so... You know, he has two chances to, to make it work here. And he also still will have Adam on a clock with, with, with two emblems, right? Like, yeah. That's that's also still a thing. Ooh, ooh there goes the well, Quint. Goodbye, Quintorius. And sadly, it's just a shock. Um, okay. What's Chandra I mean, right now? Uh, only at two. So. Okay, so we'd have to kill off the Chandra in order to. to yeah, get and if Adam. Over. I guess he's going to. Huh. I mean, it's going to die anyway, right? So, yeah. Might as well take a Viper along with you for the ride. I guess we're at that point where we ask ourselves does Adam have an artifact engraved to flip over the bricks? So, it's, so, so Adam has drawn a card he can't cast. 
uh, here. <laughs> it's a double green card. <laughs> Again, the three color mana bases. It's uh, life is rough sometimes. Uh, and he's playing like a bunch of colorless lands too, like top double cavernous maw and stuff. It's uh, oh, it, it's a highly unforgiving uh, mana base potentially when it doesn't work. Um, yeah, this... he, has, he has the hulking raptor in hand, the two green green five three rare that gives you extra mana. This bat is a pretty good hit for Adam though. So it's he's allowing him to... deciding if he wants a cavernous maw, which will not advance him to be able to cast his his raptor. And he says, "Nah, I want to cast my dinosaur." I'm gonna bottom this land. He can't. He, he doesn't even have enough caves yet for it. Okay. York's got the Whirlpool. Is he just going to fire it off in the 1-1? I mean, he could. Don't think he's he's uh, he needs to, but... No, I think you pass. You wait for your opponent to activate the land. Make it into a 3-3, three, three, okay. and then you get rid of Mine shaft spider off the top here, the 3-4. The it's, it's a nice one. Oh, that's playable. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable here. Oh. We'll see if York. We'll see if this uh, rune, rune looker bat meets the threshold for quicksand whirlpool. This might though. This might meet the threshold. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Let's see. I almost think. Well, you can't activate it, buddy. <laughs> All right, there goes an artifact in the grave. Okay. All right. So now well, Adam now it's picking up here. Yeah. Yeah. Now the game is potentially turning because. Uh, this clay fire bricks, uh, it's like it comes out in turn two and it just, it just sits there and it sits there and it sits there. And you know, if you don't get your opponent low enough, that card's just going to win. It's like inevitable, right? Like pretty much Thanos. Eventually it's going to happen. It just sits there and you're like, I am not killing my opponent fast enough. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Now how do hey, I win? Good... Tectonic hazard. Okay. Yeah, we <laughs> so we saw we saw a game earlier where Damien kept a one lander with a spyglass siren, and York had the tectonic hazard, and Damien was extremely uh, displeased about it <laughs> on turn one. So he he, yeah. he couldn't dig for his second land, and he's like, "Why are you playing that?" And York's like, because "That was my exactly. question. Anytime anyone main board that, you're just like, why? But why?" Well, now we see. <laughs> I don't. I, I really don't think we saw, but. We, I mean, it was useful. It, it it killed the thing. It killed a real actual... I'm not going to say threat because it's a 1-1, one, one, but it killed a real actual card. So, All right, here's a Waterwind Scout. That's nice. Uh, yeah. Adam, instead, Adam has drawn yet another double green card. So as soon as he gets a green source, he's going to be able to cast Colossodactyl and Hulking Raptor. But with... Uh, yeah, he's just going to keep exploring here. He's got even another two counters to put on this. So Adam's Colossodactyl, which will be a 5-6, will not be large enough, even if he draws his green. York, do not keep this courtyard on top. Don't be a madman. <laughs> well, he 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 is a madman, regardless of whether he keeps it. <laughs> All right, okay. he put it to the bottom. <laughs> he's, he's slightly less mad now. Yeah, this uh, game's just gonna this scared. game's just gonna end, uh, honestly, because uh, you know, mana mana problems here. And and I mean, as much as you say you you can sacrifice the captivating cave to put a make a four four, he can't sacrifice the captivating cave because that's his reach creature gone, his uh, colossal yeah. icon hand that he won't be able to cast. So it's stuck here because even if he does cast it, yeah, I think he's just doing it, and he's going to try and uh, courtyard next turn to find an answer because even if he plays the colossal uh the waterwind scout becomes a six six with the with the other cave. So nice, nice little heads up realization that uh, playing the Colossal Actal was not the answer here. Ah, uh, this is funny. <laughs> he scribed Discover Land at the bottom to draw a new Discover Land anyway. No, well, it was bound to happen. And now Adam's uh, up against it. He has uh, he has one shot with his uh, courtyard. And then uh, right. we see we see York turn the tables here if uh, if this works uh, out. And that's just a marionette. So. Uh, Looks like York, uh, backed up, backed up by some by some planeswalker buddies, uh, gets the games to go in his favor here against uh, against Adam. I was gonna give a couple shots on the way out, and uh, you know, I I talk about the the three color decks all the time. You know, two color mana bases are bad enough, but then three colors with a bunch of colorless lands. Once in a while, you get games like this. Uh, so unfortunate mana issues there at the end. But uh, a fun match overall. Congratulations to York for getting getting the revenge from last week and uh, getting.
getting the win here, and we'll be back with uh, York's second match uh, in a little bit.